whose flowers were scarcely withered. It excited him, too. That many men had already loved Daisy, it increased her value in his eyes. He felt their presence all around about the house, pervading the air with the shades and echoes of still vibrant emotions. But he knew that he was in Daisy's house by a colossal accident. However glorious might be his future as Jay Gatsby, he was as present as a as at he was at a, at present a penniless young man without a past, and at any moment the invisible cloak of his uniform might slip from his shoulders. So he made the most of his time. He took what he could, ravenously and unscrupulously. Even eventually, he took Daisy one still October night. Took her because he had no real right to touch her hand. He might have despised himself, for he had certainly taken her under false pretenses. I don't mean that he had traded on his phantom millions, but he had deliberately given Daisy a sense of security. He let her believe that he was a person from much the same stratum as herself, that he was fully able to take care of her. As a matter of fact, he had no such facilities. He had no comfortable family standing behind him, and he was liable at the whim of an impersonal government to be blown anywhere about the world. But he didn't despise himself, and it didn't turn out as he imagined. He had intended probably to take what he could and go, but now he found that he had committed himself to the following of a grail. He knew that Daisy was extraordinary, but he didn't realize just how extraordinary a nice girl could be. She vanished into her rich house, into her rich, full life, leaving Gatsby nothing. He felt married to her. That was all. When they met again, two days later, it was Gatsby who was breathless, who was somehow betrayed. Her porch was bright with the bought luxury of starshine.